We're going to look at prime factorization as a way to help us find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. But first, let's do a quick reminder of what uh, prime numbers are. So, the definition of a prime number is that it's a whole number that has exactly two factors, one and itself. So these prime numbers are basically the basic building blocks of the number system because they're the numbers that can't be broken down any further. You can't divide anything into a prime number without leaving a remainder, except, of course, one, which goes into anything, and, of course, the number itself, right? So let's have a look at a few examples. Uh, one, is one a prime number? Well, let's list the factors of one. All right. Well, in fact, it's very uninteresting. The only factors that one has is one. That's the only thing it can divide in without a remainder. So it doesn't have exactly two factors. So it is not a prime number. What about two? Well, what are the factors of two? One can go into two and two can go into two, but nothing else. So two is a prime number because it's got two factors, one and itself. 3, is that a prime number? Well, yes, because what are its factors? 1 goes in, 2 doesn't, 3 does. So 1 and itself, exactly two factors, it's a prime number. What about 4? Is it a prime number? Well, 1 goes in, but also 2 goes in, and then 4 goes in. doesn't have exactly two factors. It's got this funny factor here, which means that it is not a prime number. And so we can go on. 5 is prime. 6 isn't, 7 is, 8 isn't, 9 isn't. Why isn't 9? Because 3 can divide into 9, right? So it has a factor that isn't just 1 or itself. And we can go on and on like this. Hopefully this is a good reminder to you. These ones, the ones like 4 and 6 and 8 and 9, that aren't prime numbers that, can, that have more than two factors are called composite numbers. All right. Now we're going to look at highest common factor and lowest common multiple, and we're going to do this example, 100 and 375. Now to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple, well, we already did some of those in the last lesson. They say, for example, to find the highest common factor, we wrote out all the factors, and then we found the biggest one to write the lowest common multiple. We wrote out all the multiple, well, a whole lot of the multiples, and we see where, so we got the first one in common. But with big numbers like 100 and 30, 375, it's actually going to take you an enormously long time to write out all the factors. And so we're going to use our prime factorization to make it easy for us. So how does prime factorization work? Well, if we want to find the prime factorization of 100, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the prime factorization first, and that'll help us, right? So what the prime factorization means is we're just going to keep on breaking 100 down until we get it into just prime numbers. So we're going to work out what multiplied together gives us 100. We can really start anywhere. So I'm going to start with 10 times 10 because I know that gives me 100. I check each of these, 10 and 10. Are they prime numbers? No. So I can keep on breaking this thing down. So what does 10 break down into? Well, 5 times 2. Are these prime numbers? Well, 5 is, so I circle it. 2 is, so I circle it. And this 10 obviously will also break down into 5 and 2. And so we've got the prime numbers that 100 ma is made up of is 5 times 2 times 5 times 2. And we can write that very nicely using our exponential notation as 2 squared times 5 squared. All right, let's do the same for 375. All right, it can split, okay, 5 obviously goes in, so 5 goes into 37, 7 times, remainder 2, 5 into 25 goes 5 times. Okay, this is a prime number, so I circle it, this one isn't, so I break down further. And I know that, again, I can have here, 3 goes into that, because 3 times 25 gives me 75. 3 is a prime number, so I circle that. 25, can I break it down? Well, yes, 5 times 5. So now I can tell you that 375 is equal to 3 times 5 cubed. Okay, how does this help me find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor? I have written out again um, what we've just found, the prime factorization. 100 is 2 squared times 5 squared, 375 is 3 times 5 cubed. Now, 
To find the LCM, the LCM, lowest common multiple, it must be a multiple of 100, right? So 100, 200, 300, 400, and it must also be a multiple of 375. Now, because it's got to be a multiple of 100, it's got to have everything that's in 100. And because it's got to be a multiple of 375, it's got to have everything that's in 375. So, we have to take all the primes. So, let's go. Taking all the primes, we've got to take the 2, we've got to take the 3, and we've got to take the 5, right? Now we've got all the primes that we have there. And because it's got to be contain the whole of this and the whole of that, we have to take the highest power. So here I will take 2 squared. This is There's only a 3 to the power of 1, so that's fine. Here we've got a 5 squared and a 5 cubed. We've got to take the highest power, so I'll take 5 cubed. And if I go ahead and work this out, it's 4 times, 12, 4 times 3, which is 12, times 125, and that gives me 6,000. So there's my lowest common multiple. What about my highest common factor? Well, the highest common factor has to divide into 100. So it has to divide into this, and it has to divide into this. So the only things that can divide into both, it has to be only the primes that are in both. I can't, for example, take the 3, because although 3 will divide into 375, it isn't here. So it won't divide into 100. So what I have to do is I have to only take the prime numbers that are in both of them. So if I look carefully here, 2 is not in both, so I can't take that. 5 is in both, so I can take it. And 3, no, that's not in both, so I can't take it. And then, once I've got my primes, I must take the lowest one, the lowest power. And so it's 5 squared or 5 cubed, I must take 5 squared. And so my highest common factor is 25. Okay, for you to try now, uh, what's find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor of 60 and 54 by using the prime factorization. So you're first going to start with the prime factorization and then do it. Pause the video now and do it. Okay, so I've just quickly put the prime factorization up there. Um, so you should have got that um, 60 is 2 squared times 3 times 5, and that 54 is 2 times 3 cubed. You might have done it in a slightly different way, but that's the answer you should get. If you didn't, stop, try and correct. All right, if you did, let's continue. Let's go for our lowest common multiple. Remember, for our lowest common multiple, and this is where it's almost funny and the easy way to remember it is, despite the fact that you're looking for the lowest common multiple, you're doing almost exactly the opposite. You go for everything and you go for the highest power. So lowest common multiple, you go for everything and the highest power. So for everything, I've got to take all the, the primes I see there, 2, 3, and 5, and I'm going to go for the highest power. So of the 2s, I'm going to go for the 2 squared. Um, of the 3s, I'm going to go for the 3 cubed. And then there is only 1, 5. So I've got 4 times 5, which is 20, and 20 times 3 cubed, which is 27. So I get 540. All right, what about my highest common factor? Again, the easy way to remember this is despite the fact that you're looking for the highest common factor, you only pick the primes that are in both. So you pick only a few of the primes and you pick the lowest power. So highest common factor, you do the only the ones that are in both and you do the lowest power. So we have only taken what the things that are in both. So two are in both, three is in both, but five, this thing isn't in both of them. So two and three are the primes I'm going to look at. And I've got to take the lowest power. So there's a two squared and a two to the one. I must just take the two to the one. There's a three cubed and a three, so I must just take a three to the one. So two times three, nice and easy, is six.